This one may be a little more scattershot than I'd like. No one could ever accuse me of being too organized. Uh, see, I've already started building the engine behind the scenes, so you're sort of jumping in at the middle of things. Let's take a look at the mess I've started. Uh, this is going to be a bit more of a dialogue of my thought processes for the system than a play-by-play -play of what I'm building. Uh, technical details should be light and easy to follow. Uh, I've started by building something called an Entity Component System model for the game. Uh, it seemed the most reasonable way to start. Uh, this system is all about aggregation. Entities are discrete things in the world. They're analogous to objects in a pure object-oriented model. But instead of being directly filled with attributes and methods, though, an entity is made up of components. That's where the fields and functions live. Uh, for example, here's the pawn generator. It's what creates a pawn that can walk around the map and do things. You can see that it constructs a basic entity and fills it with various components. Uh, this one holds location data, that one holds a component called an actor component, which I'll come back to. Here's a render component that allows it to be rendered on the screen, and here's a scale and rotation component, uh, well, two of them, to allow it to change orientation and size. Notice that the entity here doesn't have anything to do with a pawn. An entity could be a person, or a toaster, or a tree, or a patch of dirt. It's just a container for components. Components hold the attributes that define what it is. Components don't hold the methods, though. Uh, they don't have to, anything to do with the way the world actually works. It doesn't do anything, it's just numbers. Uh, to look at that, we have to look at systems. Uh, these classes accept components and process them according to the values of their attributes. That's it. Uh, here's the render system. It accepts the location, the scale, the rotation, and the render components and uses that to display things to the screen. When an entity is created, it's added to any applicable systems that will process over its components. The entity component system model breaks up the traditional object-oriented model into pieces and spreads them around. The entity itself is just a container, the components are fields, the systems are methods. This takes more work to organize, but it gives us a very powerful advantage. Concerns are highly separated in this model. A system doesn't need to know about the entities it's working over, and the components don't need to know anything about any other components that have, they happen to live beside. It helps prevent bugs from propagating problems out of, outside of their domains. Another big reason I've aimed for this system is because it's going to let me add some re and remove some features from entities in real time and on the fly. Uh, making uh, something in the game luminescent will just require adding a luminosity component to that entity. Making something have a health attribute will just involve adding a health component to that entity. Changing how health works will just involve touching the health components and system and nothing else. A third reason that it's an ideal system for very big scale systems. Uh, the ECS model works just as well over a cluster of NoSQL databases as it does on a traditional single processor platform. It should make things much easier to multi-thread. Uh, there is a bit of a problem, though. I've been using libgdx uh, as a rendering system, and libgdx has systems for animating, rendering, and updating. It's called the actor model. It's a shortcut for rendering, and importantly for me at least, click capturing, UI stuff. I've started using this to handle user interactions, and did that by making an actor component. As you can see here, it needs to look in on other components. It's behaving like a system. I'm hoping to be able to pull this out from the component and into a system, but we'll see. I may have to cobble something else together. Next video, I'm going to talk about where I'm going from here and maybe a bit about mapping and the user interface. UI has always been a bit of a problem for me, so I'm hoping that talking through it will help clarify things in my own head as well. That's it for now. Thanks for listening.